thanks for dropping in. This is Dracula's Tower, a 3D printed puzzle box with a spooky exterior. The model is a bit more intricate than my usual designs. One might even mistake it as nothing more than a holiday decoration. And that makes it all the better for hiding Halloween treats. In this video, I'll demo the puzzle solution and how to build your own copy. If you'd rather solve the puzzle on your own, skip this and ask another maker to assemble one for you. Beyond this point, we're getting into spoilers. Dracula's Tower is a hidden maze puzzle box. This mechanic has been a staple of 3D printed puzzles for years. It usually takes the form of nested cylinders, which you twist and pull as you navigate through the maze. This puzzle changes that formula in three ways. First, it uses a less direct control mechanism. All lateral movement to the maze is driven by sliding a section of the tower back and forth. So it's not immediately apparent that this linear motion is being converted into a rotational one. Next, unlike most cylinder mazes, this puzzle never actually reveals the maze track. Even after opening the puzzle box, the maze remains fully hidden. Last, and certainly not least, this is a modular puzzle. The tower uses swappable maze inserts with various degrees of difficulty. So unless you know which insert is installed, the path remains a mystery, and since these inserts are relatively small prints, you don't need to use much plastic to switch up the challenge. But I promised an actual solution, so I'll run through the five inserts that are launching with the project, from easiest to most difficult. I've labeled the first insert very easy, because it's basically just a latch. The maze has one turn, and no dead ends, so all you need to do to unlock it is move the slider and pull the tower. The easy insert also has no dead ends, but it takes a more winding route. Just pull the tower as you move the slider all the way back and forth six times. This would be a good option for a young child. You can't get lost in the maze, but it requires a little more work to fully open. And if your print settings are just right, this maze is fun to lock back up, since gravity will do much of the work for you. The medium insert is the first one to add dead ends, but each dead end is only a move or two away from the wrong turn that got you there. So as long as you're paying attention, it's easy to backtrack and try again. I'd use this insert as a gift box for someone who's mildly interested in puzzles, but doesn't want to spend more than two minutes on one. The hard insert is the first time where you actually have to push the tower down in a few spots in order to make forward progress through the maze. This is really counterintuitive, and it ups the challenge for someone who's trying to mindlessly brute force the solution. The hard insert takes everything that came before it and adds longer dead ends. It also relies heavily on sliding the control mechanism into trickier half-click positions. Even though I know this maze layout, it takes me a few tries to navigate through it. The project also includes a blank insert, so you may see maze remixes in the future, possibly some that are more difficult than any of these. That's it for the solution, so let's build a new copy. Despite how intricate this puzzle looks, this is one of my easiest puzzles to assemble. We'll need to print only six parts, a base, a slider, a maze insert, a washer, the main body, and a tower. None of these parts require supports, but if curling or lifting around sharp corners is an issue, add a brim to hold those down. The only required hardware is four 12 mm long M3 bolts. I also recommend four 6x3 mm magnets. These aren't strictly necessary, but they give the slider mechanism a pleasant snap. And when the puzzle isn't being used, the magnets hold the slider in its neutral position. The first few steps are going to sound very familiar to those who saw the Lunar Lighthouse assembly video. We're going to glue four magnets into dedicated holes in the base and the slider. We'll also take an M3 bolt and screw that into the bottom of the slider. Keep turning until half the bolt is sticking all the way through the top. The bottom of the base has two more bolt holes. Add bolts to these and tighten them until they're just short of poking through the top. Once the glue from the magnets is completely dry, pop the slider onto the base. Do not do this until the glue is completely dry. 
A stuck slider will mean reprinting replacements. Not that I know anything about that. Next, slide the maze onto the base and secure it there with the 3D printed washer in the last bolt. Now's a great time to make sure that the maze rotates nicely when the slider moves back and forth. If it feels too stiff, just loosen the bolt in the washer a bit. Now slide the main body onto the base. This should be rotated so that the main arch lines up with the front door and the stairway. Next, tighten the two bolts we added to the base to secure the main body. All that's left is to slide on the tower and solve the puzzle in reverse. You'll notice that the tower has one window that's larger than the rest. This is the side that faces to the front. And there we go. I told you this was one of my easiest puzzles to assemble. Switching out inserts is also very easy. Just remove the central bolt and washer, swap mazes, and restore the bolt. That's it for Dracula's Tower. I have one more Halloween project on the way. Going by my normal schedule, that video would drop on Halloween. Not great for those who actually want some time to print the project. So I plan to release that video a few days early. Keep an eye out for that. But until then, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. The first few steps are going to sound familiar to those who saw the Lunar Lighthouse assembly video. We'll need to glue all four magnets into dedicated holes in the base, 